main engine start at T minus 10 seconds. Nine, and there eight. it is. We have a go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour with the first American element of the International Space Station uniting our efforts in space to achieve our common goals. Roll program. Houston's now controlling. Endeavour's rolling on a course heading northeast from the Kennedy Space Center toward a 240-mile-high rendezvous with the Zarya control module. traveling 575 miles per hour, altitude three miles, one and a half miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. And that's James Three Hartsfield, the NASA now, commentator at the Johnson Space Center in Houston in Mission Control, describing this count, this launch, I should say, as it proceeds. So far, so good. A spectacular launch here at the Kennedy Space Center, uh, turning uh, really night into day. It's very difficult to describe, and I don't think the TV camera really captures it. No, pretty much the picture we saw was just bloomed out by the, the brightness, the brilliance of that. Nothing quite like a shuttle launch. Go and throttle it. Roger, go and throttle And that's Bob Cabana responding to the commander. Bob Cabana responding to Mission miles. Control, telling him go at throttle up, which uh, really means that all the systems are working well. It's primarily a communications check, just to let everyone know that uh, they're all still in contact and everything's still looking One good at this point. One and a half minutes since liftoff, Endeavour's already burned more than two and a quarter million pounds of propellant, weighing less than half of what it did at launch. And we're about 20 seconds away from Altitude the point when those two big solid fuel boosters will be separated and jettisoned to fall back in the ocean. The shuttle, of course, will continue on toward orbit on the power of its three liquid-fueled main engines. boosters are just about ready to be jettisoned. There they go. And there they go. Mm. Bill, when we do achieve orbit uh, and meet up with the station that's already there, at what altitude? I guess we can't call it an altitude in space. How high above the Earth are they when they do make that match? Well, the target component, the Zarya module built in Russia, is orbiting at about 240 miles up. Uh, but what the space shuttle is doing is launching into a slightly lower orbit. Uh, by being lower, they travel a little bit faster, and that's how they'll catch up with the spacecraft. And if all goes well, they will uh, grab it, uh, lock it down, dock it to the shuttle system uh, on Sunday, which will set the stage for three spacewalks over the succeeding six days uh, to, to hook it all up and, and, and make all the connections that are required to make it an operational uh, core to what's going to become the International Space Station. Yeah, Bill, you were telling us uh, yesterday about over 40 electrical connections to make, among other things. How complicated is this going to be? What's the margin for error? It's very complicated. Uh, anytime you go out in space for a spacewalk, there's always things that can go wrong. And of course, when you're doing three of these in such uh, close order that involve quite a bit of electrical work uh, connections, there's always uh, the chance that something could go wrong. But just for that reason, they've trained for an incredible amount of time. Actually, the two spacewalkers have spent uh, more than 200 hours in a water tank where they can simulate weightlessness, uh, 540 hours overall training for their specific tasks. So if you think about training 540 hours for three six-hour spacewalks, uh, you might could call that overkill, but they're really trying to make sure that uh, they can handle just about anything that comes up. Just so like they're, they're pretty confident they can do that. Right, just like yesterday, making sure that safety is key and making sure that everything goes perfectly, whether it's two seconds or not, they want it to be perfectly exactly squared. Exactly right. Well, that's right. Bill, can you tell us a little bit about the long-term goal here? This is a step in really what is going to be a, a major international effort, the space station. Well, it really is a multifaceted uh, goal for this program. There's the science, of course, which NASA tries to sell the program on. Uh, there's also the international cooperation that's a major factor here. Of course, the European Space Agency, uh, Canada, Japan, uh, and Russia, the NASA's former Cold War rival, are all participating in this mission, spending their money, their expertise. In the case of the Russians, of course, their own rockets and astronauts to help build this space station. Uh, so I think in the post-Cold War environment, uh, that certainly represents uh, uh, a laudable goal in itself. Uh, also, of course, you've got this fact that the space station uh, being as expensive as it is uh, keeps an awful lot of people employed in this country. They like to say the money isn't spent in orbit, it's spent on the ground. Okay. Bill Harwood, thank you very much. We'll talk to you once again. As we go to break, we know some stations have just joined us around the country, and if you were at the refrigerator, here's another look at Endeavour headed towards space.
about this program to bring you the following NBC News Bulletin. Good morning, everyone. I'm Monique Braxton. The countdown's begun at Cape Canaveral, where six astronauts on board the space shuttle Endeavour are ready to lift off. NBC correspondent Jay Barbary is standing by. Jay, are any troubles this morning so far? None whatsoever. It's just a perfect count, uh, Monique. In fact, skies have cleared. We have almost a full moon overhead here. They're getting ready for the launch today. And where they had that technical problem yesterday with a pressure drop in the hydraulics, we've gone through that already. That did not reappear this morning. They thought it was in a switch, and so apparently they were right. The countdown is running right on time now. It's two minutes and 15 seconds before launch, and uh, it just couldn't be going better, Monique. And we're listening now to um, the folks at Mission Control. Well, there you are, Monique. They just told the astronauts, just told the astronauts to close their visors and their spacesuit. They're getting ready to go, and they'll start chasing as soon as they get into orbit. They'll start chasing. All systems are good. The Zara part of the International Space Station. One minute, forty-five seconds, and counting. The voice we're hearing is Bruce. Buckingham in launch control. He'll be counting us down to the final moment. And right now, uh, it's quiet over there. They're just watching the clock tick away. All systems are working as they should. 30 seconds. 30 seconds now. Endeavor what we'll see at first here is that we'll see the main the engines the on the shuttle ignite space. about eight seconds before the booster rockets ignite. And if there should be any problem with the main engines, what will happen is we'll be shut down while setting the pad. But right now, there's no indication of any technical problems. There's no indication of any bad weather whatsoever, and the six astronauts are ready to begin their 12-day flight, which will be the first mission by a shuttle. Six hand counting. One minute away, it'll be the first mission by a shuttle Everything to start building the International the Space, space Station. Endeavor from Kennedy Space Center. In Jay, you mentioned that the first two minutes are the most critical for the astronauts and the spacecraft. Orbiter That's true, Monique. What happens is as soon as those solid rockets ignite, they're going. They can't stop them. They can't turn them off. They burn a little more than two minutes. So while the solid rockets are burning, that's the most dangerous time for this flight for the astronauts. So we'll be watching everything very closely. And here we go. We're going into the final countdown. So let's join uh, the final countdown with Bruce Buckingham in control. T minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, we have a go, main engine start. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. We have through ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour with the first American element of the International Space Station uniting our efforts in space to achieve our common goals. Oh, pull down. It's been a perfect liftoff, Monique. We're watching the shuttle Endeavour climb the a dark sky here. And here at Kennedy Space Center, it gets daylight as the roar moves across our vantage point. Endeavour already traveling 575 miles per hour. Altitude to three miles. The shuttle Endeavour is climbing through at this point, headed toward a flight up east down. coast of the United States. To prepare the spacecraft to pass through the, the area of maximum aerodynamic pressure, also uh, called Max Q. Okay, we're listening to the voice of James Hartsville in Mission Control in Houston, telling us where the uh, shuttle is at this moment. It is beginning to make its climb over to uh, the northeast, and it will make a trip up the eastern seaboard. And uh, when, when the astronauts enter orbit, will enter orbit 170 miles off the coast of Atlantic City, New Jersey. The thing is right on course. Northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. A beautiful flight so far. One and a half minutes since liftoff, Endeavour's already burned more than two and a quarter million pounds of propellant, weighing less than half of what it did at launch. We're just about 20 seconds away from now the solid booster operation. Speed 2,400 miles per hour. Flight controllers standing by for burnout and jettison of the twin sockets coming up in about 10 seconds. Everything right on course. Everything is perfect. Here comes the burnout of the solid rockets. We should have separation here shortly. We're waiting. For, there we go. There's separation of the solids. You can see them moving away from the external tank. Both of them burning. That was a clean separation, uh, Monique. 
So that means that the astronauts now on their three primary engines, those are those liquid fuel engines. Forming a good separation of the twin solid rockets. Endeavor speed now 1,200 miles per hour as it uh, moves into its second stage, three main engines. James Hartsfield. Endeavor, your performance is nominal. You are two engine maroon. Okay. That's James Hartsfield. Nominal, two engine maroon. That means, uh, Monique, Colin that they can get to uh, a landing in Rome, Spain, if they have to, on just two inches. Normally, altitude now 42 miles. Okay, so miles actually what is happening now, Monique, they're pretty well safe. They just have three engines, the primary engines burning for the rest of the way to orbit. They have another five minutes or so to go, and then they should be just off your coast where you are, Secaucus, New Jersey. They will burn out there on their way into an orbit in 51 degrees with uh, the equator, which means that the space station, once that it is built and it's in orbit, it will go over about 95% of Earth. Right now, now traveling 4,000 miles per hour, 52 miles altitude, downrange 100 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. All right, they're approaching Jacksonville, Florida at this time. They'll go on past uh, uh, Savannah, Georgia, Charleston, South Carolina, Washington, D.C. itself, right off the coast. And it's uh, from burnout should be, as we said, about 170 miles I southeast of Atlantic City, New Jersey. Three good engines, good hydraulic systems. James being built as a new era in space missions. Share with us some of the history of the, of the making of the first international spacecraft. Well, it is a new era. It's, uh, if you will, akin to the Apollo program, but it's also been likened to building the pyramids or the Great Wall of China, if you will, Monique. But uh, this is the first of 39 flights that the shuttle make to build the space station in the next years. There will also be nine flights by a uh, rocket out of Russia, unmanned rockets. They'll take up over a hundred uh, pieces to put this thing together, and they'll have a million pieces up once that they do. It'll be the size of two football fields. It'll cover over a half an acre with its solar panels. It'll house seven people. And it will actually be, if you will, the foundation of the beginning, probably, of the first orbiting space uh, uh, city. That is all to come in the next decade. But right now, it's the first shuttle flight into orbit carrying a piece of the International Space Station. Never your pressed ATO. And there's also some difficulty with this expected okay, uh, as well. There it goes up. Okay, so they all indicating that Endeavour could reach a lower than planned uh, but safe orbit on only two engines if required. And all three engines continue to operate well. Altitude 67 miles. Endeavour speed now 1,800 miles per hour. 160 miles northeast of the Kennedy Space Center. What all that means, everything is going well, Monique. And About they're tra minutes, traveling at uh, 6,000 miles an hour. When they go into orbit, they'll be traveling at 17,000 miles an hour. I believe you have a question. I did. This is also being billed as one of the most difficult space missions. Why so? What are well, some of the constraints that the astronauts will be working in? Well, first of all, uh, it's likened to building skyscraper in orbit. And you know, if they build a skyscraper there in the area where you are, the New York City area, they can... Uh, almost feel certain that they're going to have accidents, people are going to be hurt, possibly killed in doing so, and they've got to do this in orbit under a uh, condition where that if they rip just a small hole in their spacesuits, that's instant death. And they have to do this where they have to buckle themselves inside foot restraints so that they can actually turn wrenches up there. Because being in a weightless environment, if you try to turn a, a wrench, what happens is your body turns rather than the wrench. So it's going to be difficult, it's going to be slow going, it's going to take 1,700 hours of spacewalks to put this big space station together. And we're expecting uh, to hear about, or maybe even see, three spacewalks during the next 12 days. That's correct. Uh, if all goes well, uh, they go into orbit as planned, they should catch up with the Zara portion. That's the module that the Russians' proton rocket launched on November the 20th. Right. They should catch, a, uh, catch up with that in early Sunday evening. They will grapple that with the robot arm, and uh, they will bring it in close to the Unity, which is the section that the Endeavor has on board, and they will mate them together. And once that they are, they got those two together, it'll measure 63 feet long. And you got to imagine that's as tall as a six-story building, uh, Monique. Mm -hmm. And then two spacewalkers will go out for three six-hour spacewalks, and they will connect all of the electrical connections that they need and all the other connectors to make sure that they have a permanent fixture up there.
After the first two spacewalks, the crew will go on board this bunch of the space station, both of the modules. They'll check it out, make sure everything inside is okay. So they'll actually to visit the inside space station, and then the third spacewalk that will be done two days before they come home will be to go out and check and make sure everything is ready. They'll leave tools out there for other spacewalkers going up to build the space station, as well as putting in handrails and foot restraints and all to help future construction crews. But right now, they're nearing orbit. Everything is going fine. Cut off of the main engine. Okay, now they're on just south of you guys up there, Monique, mm -hmm. about uh, two or three hundred miles. Two -thirds throttle. Coming up on burnout. 16,500 miles per hour. See, they're already up to 16,000 miles per hour. They need 17,000. Main engine cut off. 17,300 to go into orbit. And we're coming up. They'll call it Miko, main engine cut off. Okay. You should hear it from James Hartsfield any moment now. Coming up on main engine cut off. Mr. Officer confirms. Uh, main engine cut off. There you are. Well, they're in orbit. Now what they'll have to do is maybe adjust Endeavor that orbit. 17,680 miles per hour. They'll have to adjust that orbit a, a little further down the road, but for the next two days, Monique, they will Endeavor, be doing a nominal Miko. No elements one required. Great news. Perfect orbit, perfect launch. Nominal Miko, no elements one required. At no ohms ones, that means a orbiting maneuver the unit. They don't need tank. to fire it. So they're in a perfect orbit, ready to go chase down the rush heart of the space station called Zara. They should find that early Sunday evening, start mating the two together, and then Monday, early Monday evening, they will, should perform the first spacewalk, Monique. All right, thanks a lot. That is NBC correspondent Jay Barbary, our own space shuttle expert, reporting to us live from Cape Canaveral, Florida, sharing insight on the mission of the Endeavour, the six astronauts on board, and their contribution to the International Space Station. I'm Monique Braxton, reporting now from MSNBC's newsroom.